Hey everybody, I'm Mama Bird and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some kid lunches for you. We are a homeschooling family, so I pretty much make breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day for the whole family. And they can get bored of the same food over and over again real quick. So I like to be a little creative and kind of switch up my lunches. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and canning and preserving on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you'd consider subscribing. All right, so let's get these lunches started and I'll show you what I feed my kids. All right, everybody, for today's lunch, I am going to be utilizing some of these croissants, these canned ones. I actually never buy these, but I happen to have two of them left. So we are going to be using these. I have some turkey that I pulled out of the freezer that I had cooked and diced and vacuum sealed. So I'm looking to use this up. I got some frozen chopped broccoli that I have in the freezer. Here's some Philadelphia tea, cream cheese. Got this from Costco, that's where I like to get my cream cheese. I have some pre-cooked frozen bacon we're gonna put in there, and then some cheddar cheese. Also, I usually add sour cream to this, but I have this goat milk kefir that I'm trying to use up, so we're gonna add this in the, its place. So let's get this puppy assembled. First thing I'm gonna do my cream cheese is not soft and it will work better if it is. So I'm going to do about eight ounces, which would be a block. And then I'm gonna put this frozen broccoli on it. <laughs> and we're gonna get that microwaving. I'm gonna do three minutes and see how it looks. All right, Raul, that is microwaving. We are going to open up our two things of croissants. Like I said, I don't usually buy these. This is one thing I actually, when I bartered, bartered with my friend on cleaning out her freezer and fridge and she was giving me all the food she didn't want, this was included in there. This is one of the ones from Costco that had like eight of them and I have these two left. So I'm just gonna use them up, get them out of my fridge. Cause that was months ago that I did that. All right. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna unroll it. It's all right if it tears, you know, it's gotta be perfect. Put this over here. All right, so you're going to put these, the big side facing in, and you're gonna kind of layer them over each other. I'm gonna have to scoot it out more. Every time, every time. Okay. Oh, I did it. And it's like surgery getting that, getting that out of there. All right, so here is our broccoli cream cheese mixture after three minutes. Looks pretty good. And it's okay if it's still a little frozen, guys. Like, it's not gonna hurt. It'll thaw out. I'm gonna call that good, actually. And set aside for a minute while we finish our assembly here. Oh. Does anybody else have trouble with these? Like, dang it, where's the line? It's like they try and do it so it'll be simple, but then I can't figure it out. Okay, so let's separate these over here. I don't even know how to fix that. <laughs> what did I do? That's all right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Literally. No one cares, <laughs> it'll taste great. So I'm just going uh, in between and making a new, a new um, row. I don't know what that is. Just to make sure the whole bottom's covered, if you know what I'm saying.
There we go. All right, so I'm just kind of scooting it in to make sure that this thick edge is not on top of this thick edge. You want to kind of overlap it. And then that makes a nice strong base. Yeah, move it around, move it around. So you want roughly the hole in the center, and then this is where we're going to put our filling. All right, to this filling, I'm going to add some home dehydrated leeks. So that's kind of like an onion powder. And then I have this garlic salt I'm trying to finish. I do. I decided after buying this that I do not like garlic salt. I would much prefer just doing salt and then garlic powder. But I'm trying to finish it, so I'm using it. Some bacon here. No, I might. Whenever I cook these, I think I undercooked them a little bit because they're still pretty fatty. So next time I know I'm just going to bake these a little longer when I do it. And that's okay guys, like, that's the whole part of doing it yourself, is figuring out what you like and if it's wrong, or, and then figure out how to do better. Like, you're not going to get this 100% the first time. It takes practice and it takes experience. Alright, I'm going to zap this probably for like a minute, just to get that kind of loosened up so I can crumble it. You know what? <laughs> throw a couple more that's better all right i'm gonna add a little bit of this kefir yogurt or you could use sour cream or you could just have more cream cheese all right let's mix this up before i add the cheese oh no i always do too small of a container guys every time i never learn this is a really versatile recipe. Like you can do this with any kind of filling. I think I originally saw it with a taco filling. So like taco meat, cheese, do the same thing. And then you can put like sour cream and salsa on top of it. That'd be pretty good. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Trying to use up this cooked turkey I have in my freezer because turkey season's coming, so we're about to get a lot of turkey. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some cheddar cheese. A little over half a cup, I'd say. You know, guys, I think next time I'm going to dice my bacon and put it in the freezer cooked and diced, because I find that I used diced bacon way more than whole bacon slices. Like, I always end up heating it up and then dicing it. And I think if it was just diced in the first place, that would help a lot. These are my kitchen scissors I use strictly for doing this stuff. So if anybody was like, ah, she just grabbed those off her desk. No, no. And these will be going in the dishwasher. I got all that bacon and everything in. Oh my gosh, guys, what did I do to myself every time? And now I'm too stubborn to go get another bowl. I never claimed to be a clean cook here. <laughs> that's probably one of my biggest flaws is I am messy. That's okay. At least I cleaned it up right. All right, I'm actually gonna give this a taste just to make sure. Let's hope I don't need to add anything and remix all that. Mm -mm. Oh, that tastes good, okay. So we're just going to scoop this around the middle. I know this looks pretty heavy on the broccoli, but I think with it being that chopped broccoli, it'll still be good. Alright, and that just took up half of my, my filling. So then I have this I can save and try and utilize somewhere else. And then you're just going to take them, wrap them, and then you're going to just like kind of make 
an inner circle with the tops, if that makes sense. Move it over, push it to the side, over, push to the side. See that, to me, it has a lot of extra room, so I'm gonna throw another scoop of filling right there. So it has more to wrap around, see? guys and that's it so I'm gonna put this in at 350 let's do 20 minutes and then we'll check it all right this just came out after 20 minutes you can tell it's kind of bubbling it's a little golden brown but in here is still a little doughy so I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in for like seven more minutes all right this one just came out after the seven minutes and you can see it's a lot more cooked so this is perfect so we're just gonna let this cool and then we'll slice it up so I'm going to give this a cut. Bottom. And that's what's for lunch today. Serve this up with some fruit cocktail and they are good to go. For today's lunch, I'm going to be making meatball subs. These are some meatballs that I canned myself. If you missed the video on how to make these, I will link them below. So we're gonna pop them open. And this is just canned in tomato juice. And as it cans, it turns into like a sauce. I'm gonna get this heating up in a pan. Just low, look at a five. The meatballs are already cooked. I just need to heat up this sauce. I'm gonna turn my oven on broil. Just on a high broil. I'm gonna be using these gourmet rolls, kind of like hoagie rolls here. I'm gonna put some butter on here so they can toast under the broiler. All right, so these are going under the broiler. This sauce was just plain tomato juice, so I'm gonna add some seasonings to it. Some salt. Mama, yeah. I got to go to and wash the bathroom when I have to do the combo. Okay. Thanks for telling me. Okay, and then Italian seasoning. I'm gonna kind of crush it up in my hand a little bit. And then I have some onion powder. All right, so we're just gonna let that, I think I'm gonna add a little more salt. Just let that come up a little bit. They taste pretty good. My only complaint is that they are a little dry. So I'm not sure they got overcooked i probably cooked them too long before i put them in there well mixed in with the sauce and covered in cheese with bread these are going to be great i'm going to cut these meatballs in half just to make them a little easier for kids sprinkle some cheddar cheese just because that's what I have right now going in the oven make sure when you put stuff in the broiler that you really have to watch it it does not take long for it to burn quickly those of you who've never used the broiler before it's just the part of your oven that has like stray flames on it some of them use them when you open the door it's right on top like my gas stove does that other ones electric ones have it where like the door opens up and that's where your broiler is so just kind of figure out 
where it is on your oven and it doesn't take long to use it, doesn't take long to heat up, and it's easy to quickly melt something if you ever need to use that. So if you haven't tried to broiler out, give it a try, it comes in handy. And those are done. Alright, so this is what the kids are having for lunch. A little meatball sub and an apple. Everybody, for today's lunch, I'm going to be using up these cheddar cheese shells. I only have one box of shells. All the rest are macaroni. And I can't, I don't know, I could mix and match them, I guess. But I'm just not going to do that to my OCD. So I'm just going to try and stretch out this one box. So I'm gonna add it to my pot of water and then I have a little bit of peas left. So I'm gonna throw these in while my pasta is cooking. All right, so we'll get that all heating up together. And then over here for what my goodies, I'm gonna add in some bacon because I happen to have quite a bit of bacon right now. And then I have a can of tuna I was gonna add, but I also have these little pre-made tuna salads that I get every Friday with my kids' power packs from the food bank. They send you home with either a tuna salad or a chicken salad. Oh my gosh, children. So I'm going, this just has uh, mayonnaise. Let's see, it has mayonnaise in there, celery, sugar, carrots. So, I mean, nothing too bad. So I'm gonna add this, because I feel like the mayonnaise base will go well with the mac and cheese. I have a little bit of this Asiago cheese left, and one of you said a little goes a long way with this, and I appreciate that tip. So we're gonna add just a little bit of that in there. And then instead of milk, I'm gonna add in this goat milk kefir. I had got this at the food bank, and I'm trying to use it up, and it goes pretty great. It's really creamy, so uh, it's just no sugar in there. Oh, there's five sugar in there, but that's fine. I mean, we're not really drinking it, I'm just kinda using it to add into stuff. And then for the side, I'm going to be opening up some of my cinnamon applesauce. I really need to scrape this, this looks so tacky. But anyway, I'm sure you guys are curious about when I reuse jars, like I can tell how they seal because the button is down, it's completely flat. And whenever I give this an open, you will hear the pop. See, and now, and now it goes because this rubber seal heats up when you water bath it and then it seals, just like how it does in the store. And there's our cinnamon applesauce we made. If you missed the video on how I made this, I can link that below. So let's get this assembled. All right, let's check our pasta. It's pretty good. Ow, I don't know why I choose to do it this way. Uh, it's a little crunchy, we'll give it a few more minutes. And then we'll get this drained. And back into the pot. He decided to come help me. This is my son, Gideon. Gideon, how old are you? Five. Five, yep. All right, we're putting in a little bit of butter. Gideon, stir. Or do you want me to stir? You put in. Nah, he better stir. I don't trust you putting stuff in. Good, get in there and get that clump of butter stirred around. What are we making? Mac and cheese, and what else is in there? What are those green things in there? Peas. Peas, do you like peas? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of milk, I'm adding in this yogurt. There's the cheese. Try right, getting stirred well, it up. What's the yogurt? It's this stuff right here. That's yogurt? Yeah, it's yogurt. It's goat milk yogurt. It's pretty cool. Here, you can add in some of this cheese. Hold on, I'll put your hand out. Okay, that much, sprinkle it in the mac and cheese. Good job. <laughs> That's gonna be super cheesy. Mom, can I grab my whiskers? Sure, do not put it in the food. I'm just showing them. <laughs> yep, some skeletons. We decorated for Halloween yesterday, didn't we? Can we let them see the decorations in the background? Yeah, they can see them. You can see our decorations? The spooky spiders. Okay. And a spooky clown. And a spooky what? And a, spook, uh -huh. a spooky clown. We do have a spooky clown, like super spooky. Like, it has a red button and a 
and his eyes turn red and he says, Maybe because I've been hiding under your bed. <laughs> not creepy, right? It's not Halloween without a creepy clam. All right, so I just opened this up and this is what it looks like if you guys have never seen this before. Like there's some of the carrot and it's just like tuna salad pretty much in a can. Doesn't taste too bad. You wanna try it, Gideon? No. Tuna salad. No. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Will you take that lid off? I'm not done yet. <laughs> Thanks, sir. All right, so I'm gonna add two cans of this. Now, obviously, if you don't have this, add in tuna fish if you would like, or salmon if you like that, or you could do chicken, right? Hey, get out of here. All right, bacon. And the bacon's just because, well, it's bacon. That's a lot of bacon. Whoa! Oh no. Gideon. Bacon hit the floor. That is unacceptable in this household. You okay? Yeah. All right. Nope, that's good. It's all in there. And uh, here we go. Look at that. So let's get this dished up. All right, he's going to taste it. That was a big bite. Two thumbs up. <laughs> All right. There we go. And that's what's for lunch. Yummy! Right, for today's lunch, I'm going to be using up this stuffing that I had in that wreath earlier, that croissant wreath. I made a little too much filling and it didn't all get in there. So I'm going to heat up that leftover filling. Honestly, I could just eat this cold like this, guys. It's so good. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to get this melty and see how it looks. I have a little bit of half and half here. I'm probably going to have to add. Because this is just cream cheese, cheese, bacon, and turkey. And then I cooked some rice in my Instapot. If you haven't seen me cook rice in the Instapot yet, I made a video on that in my earlier days. I can give that one a link if you would like to check out how to make some delicious brown rice in your Instapot. Half and half and heavy cream make excellent sauces for like pasta or rice. I highly suggest having that in your budget if you can because I use them a lot and I definitely think it's worth it. I get my heavy cream at Costco and half and half there and it's really great price guys. Like you get a lot of good deals. Okay, it's pretty good. But yeah, you can get a lot of pretty good deals at Costco or Sam's Club if you have one of those. What are some of your guys' favorite things to get at Costco? I know we got some Costco or Sam's Club lovers in here. And just a smidge more to make a little more sauce. And I think that looks good. Now, I might have diluted the flavor down a little bit by adding in that half and half. So I'm gonna taste this again. You always wanna be tasting your food constantly, guys, to make sure it's good. You don't wanna put up something that, oh, that's way too salty, or oh, if I really needed some salt and you didn't have a chance to taste it, you know? And it's good to taste your food throughout its flavor development so you can really tell what, you know, adding citrus would do or what a little bit more salt, how that changes the flavor, you know? All right, so let me taste some. I'm gonna add more salt and pepper. Go figure. Hmm. A little more onion powder here. My leek powder I'm trying to use up. All right, so now that I added that salt and that onion powder, let's give it another taste. Oh yeah, that's it. And that made it all the difference. Some of my rice. I always cook extra rice. Then I have some in the fridge. So I can either use it for another meal or 
have it as a side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because it's all cooked and thickened. I'm just stirring hot sauce with hot rice. This doesn't look too bad. I'm kind of like a turkey, bacon, broccoli rice dish. That's it, guys. That tastes great. No, just two bowls today. One of my twins is sleeping. So, they don't really, the, they're five, so they don't really take naps anymore. But every once in a while, they really need one. So, they take one. So, here's for the other two. Those are just some of the lunches that I make for my kids to kind of stretch stuff, make it go further, switch things up a bit, you know, try some new stuff. If you have any ideas of what I could have made with the food I used, please leave them below. I also have a Facebook group, Mama Baird's Homestead. Uh, I have that linked on my main channel page if you want to go check that out. I can link it below if you need me to remind me and I'll do it. So thanks for coming along and seeing what I feed my kids and hanging out with us. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time on Mama Baird's. Thank you.